Welcome back to another video. Today, we are gonna be talking about social media content for both your personal Facebook page as well as your business Facebook page because if you don't know already, you need both of them. So we're gonna start out with the easiest of the two and that would be your personal page because uh, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you what you should or should not be posting on your personal page because it is your personal page. However, uh, if I can advise you, maybe just one thing, all I'm going to say is one thing for you to start doing, if you're not already doing on your personal page, is I strongly suggest to start doing stories. And stories can either be photos or videos. So you don't always have to be recording yourself if you don't want to be. The camera doesn't even have to be faced at you. So why stories, right? Why not focus on posts uh, on your business page, your personal page, whatever, right? Why stories? Well, stories are important. And if you've listened to any of my talks at the conventions or at Pathways or wherever, um, I always tell you that Whenever you post something onto Facebook, you know, on your wall, and so it goes into people's news feeds, roughly 5.5% of people that follow your page will roughly see your post because Facebook is trying to figure out if what you've posted is quality. They want to see how people react to it, blah, 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 blah. So there's a lot of variables that are no longer left up to you to determine how many people will be able to see your post. The reason why stories are so crucial and so important is because stories, in a way, cheat the algorithm. Uh, there is no algorithm for stories. Stories are great because when you post it, everybody that follows you, is friends with you, has the opportunity to see that story. Facebook doesn't like push it down depending on if it's good content or not. Uh, now, no, not everyone that you're friends with will view stories, but they have the opportunity to. Uh, I'm gonna throw up a screenshot right now of where stories are in the Facebook app on the home screen. So when you open up the home screen, this is gonna be the first thing that you see. The stories are right up top. Facebook is emphasizing stories very hard. So pun intended, why not take advantage of that free real estate on the home screen? Now, if you are unsure about what to post onto your stories from your personal page, I mean, honestly, it's well, your life uh, because you are a real estate agent, real estate will inevitably be your life. So therefore you can post about it on your personal page. One thing that you cannot do is sell on your personal page, right? That's sort of why you have the business page. You can't throw your listings on your personal page. You can't say, Hey, let me buy or sell your house. Um, just do that on your business page. The reason why you also don't need to tell people that you are that you can buy or sell their house is because if they're friends with you, they probably already know that you are a real estate agent. So with that in mind, just post stuff about your life, your day, whatever you're comfortable with. And if you're confused about Facebook stories in general, I will drop a link in the comments to a video I made probably a couple months ago explaining stories um, how to make them, what to put on them. So if you're like, yeah, that sounds fun, check the link in the comments below. Okay, so now we're gonna hop to the business page, which is obviously where you'll be doing your business. That's where you can say, hey, let me buy or sell your house, or hey, this is my newest listing. However, the business page gets a little bit more tricky um, in terms of content, what to post and, and when. Because for example, right, let's say, you are, let's say that you're watching this video right now, hopefully you are, and let's say that I'm your client. And let's say that I just bought a house from you and I've liked your business page. Since I've already bought my house, if all you're doing is posting listings, if all you're doing is posting, hey, let me buy or sell your house, why am I going to want to continue following your business page? I would unfollow you fairly quickly if that's all you did. So, so that's why we need to think about value. We need to think about how you can add value to people such as my fake self that just bought a house with you, add value to them and give them a reason to stick around. Because if I had to guess the vast majority of people that like your business page right now are not in the market to buy or sell a house right now. 
which means that you should probably give them some value and reward them for sticking around. So what are some types of content that you can offer them that are deemed valuable? Well, the greatest piece I think that we have right now that is of disposal to you created by our marketing team is the Weekender. For those of you that don't know, the Weekender is technically an email campaign. And if you are unfamiliar, it's basically a quarterly email that gets sent out and it is comprised of around four to five projects that you can do around your home that can be done in a weekend. I know, we're, we're geniuses. And the reason why this is so important is because we launched this program back in 2016. And every time we've sent out an email with four to five projects, we've uploaded each project individually to a website. That website is theweekender.online. So if you go there, you will have a plethora of essentially social media content that is deemed valuable to the person following your business page. Because the majority of the projects on the Weekender are basically increasing the home's value or increasing curb appeal, basically just making them get their house in tip top shape for if they wanna sell it now or if they wanna sell it in two years. And it's completely free. You don't have to pay, you don't even have to search. You just go to the weekender.online all of them are there for you. All you have to do is grab the link, throw it onto your business page, maybe write some copy up top about what the project is to give them a little bit of an example of what they can look forward to. And that's something that you can honestly post once a week. Okay, next thing that we're gonna be talking about that provides value would be community. So more than likely, this is gonna be where your office is. Obviously, it doesn't have to be. So for example, if you are located in the Clarkston office, you know, you can post a lot about Clarkston events and what they have going on. Insert your city here for the most part. Every city for the most part should have some sort of um, community events page where uh, they're gonna tell you, hey, what's coming up this summer? What can we look forward to now that things are, you know, slowly but sort of quickly getting back to normal. Um, I would imagine events will be coming more and more available in the summer and into the fall. So. Posting about community events are a great way to give your followers value because the more you do it, especially if they're actually like good events, people will then subconsciously rely on you as the source of information for what's going on. Like, what can I possibly do this weekend? Um, like if there's an art fair going on downtown in your city, post about it. Make a quick post about it saying how you are super excited for the art fair, um, if you're going to be there, say, hey, I hope to see you there. If not, check out my stories on whichever day you're going to be there. And then all you would have to do is when you're there, take a video, take a photo, a couple of them, whatever, post them onto your stories. And so that post that alerted people about the art fair or whatever the heck is going on, maybe they weren't able to go to it. Maybe they remembered, oh, I remember, hey, today's Saturday. That's what day they said they were going to be there. Let's go check out their story, see what they're doing, right? Again, it's not crazy, it's not groundbreaking, but it's just enough to sort of get that ball rolling with like the trust and the communication and as well as just like the reliability. Because again, at the end of the day, if they are friends with you on Facebook, if they follow your business page, they know that you are a real estate agent. They are well aware that you can help them buy or sell their house. Meaning you don't have to tell them every post. You don't even have to tell them every other post. Um, because again, if they're not in the market, whenever you post that, it's just becoming white noise. So the more you post, I can buy or sell your house, the more I'm going to see it, and then I'm just gonna tune it out. It will not exist to me anymore. Okay, last but not least, for those that are looking to get into the video game or are currently in the video game and are looking to maybe ramp up their video strategy, two things I wanna talk about. One would be the housing report. This is a video that literally every single one of you needs to be making every single month because you have zero excuses. This is the easiest video that you can be made. The script is literally hand delivered to you via email every month. It's the housing report. All you have to do is open it, go down to whichever county that you primarily do business in. More than likely, it's going to be Oakland County. You go down there and the script is literally written for you. On the left-hand side, you're going to have all the numbers about what has what has happened in the previous month. And then below it, 
is that summary, which is a, basically a paragraph, which you can literally just regurgitate those words into a video. It doesn't have to be groundbreaking. It doesn't have to be perfect looking. And more than likely, the video is going to be under a minute long. So if you are going to sit there and tell me that you cannot make a video that is under a minute long, that is already scripted for you, I have some very bad news for you as the future continues and video continues to dominate the social space. Now, the second piece of video uh, is if you are looking to actually, you know, make more videos uh, or just get into the video game, what you want to do is go on to Pinterest and search real estate infographic. This is going to bring up hundreds, if not thousands of infographics revolving around real estate. Um, some of them are seven reasons to list during the holidays, 10 home buyer mistakes to avoid, stuff like that, right? So what you would do is you'd find one that you'd like and the title or the list of that infographic is literally the title of your video. Um, and then in at, and then the video itself is literally scripted out because they give you the seven reasons to list during the holidays. They give you the home buyer mistakes to avoid. Now, yes, obviously you can uh, change some out if you don't like the verbiage on some, uh, or you can add your own in. There's no rules, but point being, this is extremely easy. All you have to do is put in the work. Again, I'm aware if you don't want to do video, I can't twist your arm, but I will say that the agent sitting next to you that does start doing video, I'm going to just take a guess that in two to three years from now, they are going to be doing pretty good if they keep the video game up. So that's it for today's video. This is probably gonna be the last time you see a video in this apartment because uh, I think like this time next week, I should be in the process of moving to a new apartment, a much better apartment um, that has like six times as many windows as my current place does. Um, it's gonna be great. So the next video you see from me will be in a different apartment, will be in a different space. So look forward to that. And as always, I will see you guys next video.